Good morning, church family. It's good to be here. I'm here not by myself, but we have La Familia. Not only La Familia, the, the place, but literally La Familia de Los Nichols. Now, you look at us and you're like, Hispanics with last name Nichols. Um, my grandpa has shared that story of how we gotten received that last name. He's had, he had like three different stories, and most of the time when he shared that story, he was drunk. But I think we, we stole it to cross over. <laughs> no, no. Uh, we have, uh, I don't know how many generations of, of Tex-Mexes here, but um, I'm here with my wife, Angelica, and we have two children, Sammy, who we just left a couple weeks ago at Southern in Tennessee, and our daughter, Chloe, who is at the Fresno, attending the Fresno Adventist Academy. And then um, my father, and then all my, my uncles and my cousins, they're all here to, to support our, our Debbie. And we're going to continue with the celebration of this ordination throughout the day and possibly the whole weekend. So um, it's good to be here. Thank you for allowing me to share uh, this stage and this platform. Um, as you know, I love to share God's word. I wouldn't have been a pastor if I didn't. Um, as, the, as a chaplain, you know, uh, it's all about people throughout the week, but I get, to sh I get to preach during the weekend, so I go to different churches and whatnot, and, and um, it's good to be here. Uh, before we start, uh, can we pray? Heavenly Father, uh, we are now going to open your love letter. And um, we don't want to see it through our eyes. We want to see it through your spirit. And so, God, give us the spiritual glasses. Give us uh, your heart and your mind so that we may be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, Matthew, Matthew 25. If you can open your smart Bibles to Matthew 25. Um, in verse 14, you, most of you will know this parable very well, uh, the parable of the talents. Um, I'm not going to read the whole parable, but I suggest later on this afternoon, if you haven't read it or you don't know it, uh, read this, this passage. Um, I just want to read from verse 14, maybe a couple of verses. It says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far what? country, who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five, another two, and another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on his journey. And then you know the story, that one, the five doubles it, two, and then the one hides it, and God, you know, at the end gives them either reward or spanking. But verse 14, the kingdom of heaven is like a man. First of all, in the Greek, the kingdom of heaven, that phrase is not in the Greek. But the, the translators or the ones that are we were writing the Bible, they, uh, they decided to put it there because of the context. 25, 14, you have Matthew 24, and we, Seventh-day Adventists, we know what Matthew 24 is all about, right? The signs of the end times. Oh, the increase of earthquakes and you know, all these disasters and the sun and the, and the stars and the moon. All this is going to happen. As a matter of fact, the world knows about Matthew 24. You can see it in the History Channel. The apocalyptic the revelation episodes. And Jesus is coming, and there's going to be all this that's going to happen for before he comes. The whole world knows that. But when we enter to Matthew 25, God says, now for those who are really interested, I need you to put on your spiritual glasses. And so he gives a parable. He starts with a parable with the ten virgins. The ten virgins are his people. But yet... Some of his, his, his people are not going to be ready. Then you come to the talents. It 
if we want to be part of the kingdom of heaven, we got to know about, our, about the talents. And so this, this verse says, for the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country. First of all, who is this man? Who went to a far country? Jesus. Where did he go? Heaven. So here we have Jesus who goes to heaven and he calls his own servants. Who are the servants? Me and you and you and me. We are. He calls us and delivers his goods to them, to us. What are the goods? Really quick, the goods can be many things. Psalms 24.1, it says, The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. What are the goods? Planet earth. Voila, this is your guys' to take care of. How about Haggai? 2.8. The silver is mine. The gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. All the riches, they're mine. But here, you take care of it. Everything is this. But then there's Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 5. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. What is his good pleasure of his will? You are. I am. You and I are the most important things that he owns. And so when God entrusts his servants the goods, he's saying, hey, you take care of each other. And how do we do that? Well, I give you talents. Some of you, I'm going to give you five. Others, four. But all of you, you all are going to have at least one. And I want to talk about that one because many times we, 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 when we meditate, when we think about our talents, we're like, eh. Is that really a talent? Hold on. They were all given talents. In verse 14 of that, uh, Matthew 25, it said, they were all given according to his, his or her own ability. So, the talent, Ephesians. Ephesians 4. Verse 7, it says, But to each one, to every one of us, grace was given. According to the measure of Christ's gift. What was given? Grace. Very good, you're with me. And why were we given this grace? Well, according to Ephesians, verse 11 it says, and he himself, prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers, for the equipping of the saints, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of knowledge of the Son of God, to a, be a perfect man or a woman, to measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness and deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth of love so that we may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. 
So what is this gift of grace for? To build. To build what? Yes. To build each other. To build this church. What else? To, to grow. Not only in numbers, but in Christ. To equip. To make sure we are sharpening what God has given us for his honor and glory. And to unify. To bring unity. Mm. Grace. The Greek word for grace is gadis. Remember that. 1 Corinthians 12. Regarding the talents again, starting with verse 4. says that there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministry, but the same Lord. Again, there are diversities of of gifts, but the same spirit. The Greek word for gifts, check this out. The Greek word for gifts, charismaton. Charismaton. We get this, uh, we get charisma from this word. When someone says he or she has charisma, what are we saying? They have a magnetic appeal or charm. They know how to arouse people. Remember, charismata, the first word, the, the first syllable or the, uh, of that Greek word, charismata, charis. Charis. Charis uh, uh, signifies, what is charis again? Grace. Ma? Charismaton, maton, or ma, gifts. Gifts. We put it together, and it literally means gifts of grace. Gifts of grace. There are diversities of gifts of grace. We see this. In Romans 12 also, where he says, in, in, starting with verse 6, we have different charismata. We have different gifts. We have different gifts of grace according to el carim, the grace given to each, of, each one of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy. If it's serving, then serve. If it's to encourage, Guess what? Give encouragement. If it's giving, give generously. If it's to lead, do it diligently. If it's mercy, do it cheerfully. Gadis mata. Gifts of grace. We all have it. We all have it. Well, what do you mean? Just a smile. That's gift of grace. Hey, I don't see my brother here today. Where are you? You're sharing a gift of grace. This family is having a hard time Let's, let's help them pay their, their electricity bill. Gift of grace. We all have it. As a matter of fact, I wanted to share, even the world knows this. Um, there's this book called um, Radical Loving Care, and we're sharing this with uh, Adventist Health. And... Um, Erie Chapman, uh, he's a, he was a CEO for a couple of the hospitals here in Ohio and some other place, and he was a judge and even a pastor. And um, he has this symbol, 
well, the book is called Radical Loving Care. And he has a symbol back here with a, a thread going through two circles, and then there's a heart in the middle. And I want you to hear what these symbols represent. Three symbols of loving service, he says. Loving care has a long and beautiful tradition in human history. In these pages, the heritage of loving care is symbolized by the image of a golden thread by the faith in God. That was a lot of words, so let me just break it down. The golden thread represents the heritage of loving care. The heritage of of loving care, this thread. Let me ask you, what is a heritage? When someone says, that's my heritage, what are they saying? Family. Family. Background. Background. Lineage. What else? How about tradition that have been passed down? For generations. So this golden thread represents loving care. We all, regardless if you have faith in God, have received love. I understand love through God. I believe in God. I believe that God is love. But in the hospital setting, we know that not everyone are believers. That's okay. But we all can love. And we all can love because we were taught love. And how were we taught love? By tradition, heritage. I know that you're thinking of something within your family. The way mama used to make the tortillas. That's what I do with me. Wait. Okay, mama. She did it with love. When they will pick you up from school, drop you off. What you do at, at the dinner table, you pray together. That's all loving care. That's, that's gifts of grace. So he says this is the, the, uh, the lo loving care. We all have the gifts of grace. Then he says the second symbol is a pair of intersecting circles signifies the merging of love and need in the sacred encounter, which is the fundamental, uh, fundamental relationship between caregiver and patient. Caregiver and patient. So we have two circles. Caregiver, patient, love, need, Christian. One who holds the gift of grace and uses his or her tradition of love so that one can connect. And we call this sacred encounter. Sacred encounter. And how do we have this? How do we get to this point? By using what you know, the way you love. Use it. Because the kingdom of heaven doesn't start when we go up there. The kingdom of heaven starts when we say, I do. And so use what he has given you. And then the heart will shine through and give you seized candies. <laughs> <laughs> or I don't know what this is. Gaudi, but whatever. Anyways, a heart. And what do you do? I mean, they receive 
this love. The one that was in need. And what do they do with it? Oh, let me tell you. The place, that's where love abides. You need to come. You need to come and visit this place. It is not unique. It's where love is. Just by using what God has given you. Use it. Use it. Because you'll see a lot of these popping up. Gifts of grace. Hmm. Let's go to another illustration. 1 Corinthians 12. It says, I should read verse 11, starting with verse 11. First Corinthians 12, verse 11, it says, But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually, as he wills. Oh, I love that. In other words, God has given the gift that he wanted to give you. That's important. Verse 12, for, for as the body is one and has many members, but all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. Members. Mm. Members, melos, in the Greek, can be translated as members, but they also use it today as keys. Keys. What kind of keys? Those keys. There are many keys. But one piano. I have an illustration to share. I, uh, can you hear me still? All right. I don't like to brag, but um, I played piano for four years. <laughs> and I realized you don't really need to know how to play. You just need to, once in a while. You know, and then talk a little bit between, and then people will be like, wow, he knows how to play. <laughs> yes, I do. That's when I swear you, babe. Uh, where's the middle C? There we go. Melos, members of the body. What is God teaching us through the keys? Ah. Share with me. Talk to me. Tell us, what, did God, what is God teaching you right now? Ooh! Harmony. Harmony. Uh, what, is a har what is harmonizing? When, when we 
have two notes working together, making a sweet sound. You need two in order for harmony to happen. So we got to work together to make sweet music, right? What else? Talk to me. I'm going to drink some water while you, while you, while you share. Some are black keys. Some are white keys. And they're all unique. There's no same note. Right? When the key looks up, it becomes sharp. When the key goes down, what is it? Flat. The key needs to stay put. The key must not compare to any other keys. The key cannot copy another key. The piano maker says, no, you're going to play that note. You're not going to be Pastor Jose Rojas. You are Zeke. I'm, I'm just a deacon. No, you're not just a deacon. You are called by God to play the note. So play that note. What else? What else do you see? Maybe while I was playing, what did you notice? Oh, you guys are quiet this morning. You're probably ready for food. While I was playing, and when I got to the chorus, people started joining in and what? Singing. Singing. When people love what they see, love what they hear, they want to be part of the music that you're playing. What note are you playing today? Tell me more. Anybody else? I noticed you hit a wrong note. Oh, bro, don't such a You didn't have to say that. <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> say, say, say it again. No, no, that, that's a great point. Okay, I played the wrong note. No, wait, more than one. And I corrected it. As a matter of fact, I, I even knew. Well, how did you know I was, it was wrong? I was like, did you notice that? Oh, mercy. Did I stop and say, <laughs> I played the wrong note. I'm not going to play anymore. What did I do? I kept on playing. You're going to make mistakes. Keep on playing. Keep playing. Because he's going to touch you. And when he touches you, you got to make that note. Regardless if you don't feel like it. Good job, bro. What else? Yeah, I did make a mistake. Mm -hmm. You thought I finished. Uh, be the last note. Um, and then I said, amen. Sometimes we think, okay, we're about to finish. As a matter of fact, we're about to finish. <laughs> And God said, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh, -uh, uh, -uh. I, got, I got more music to play. He tells you when to stop. We don't stop. If we had the talent, if we still, <laughs> and we're all here, and we all had the gift of grace, again, we got to use it. 
Yeah. Sometimes the rhythm will go faster. Sometimes it'll slow. It doesn't matter. Just play the song. Play the song that the conductor, the head, Jesus is playing. And when people hear that song, not only will it bring forth that heart, but it will glorify him. It will glorify him. That's what it's all about. So yeah, the kingdom of heaven starts here. The kingdom of heaven, play. Use that gift of grace. Use that golden thread, however you know how. You don't have to be a preacher or a teacher. <laughs> Whatever God has given you to love on others, use it. God bless you.